It is so freaking hot out here. I was almost having second thoughts on doing this today. 98 degrees. I've driven about 50 miles to get to this location from my launch point. Time for a nut fancy project update on the KTM 690 Enduro R. I've had about 50 guys ask about this bike over the years. Do I still have it? How's it running? Am I going to sell it? Any breakdowns? What problems have you had with it? What mods have you done with it? I hope to answer those questions right here, right now, in the desert all alone. And I have to do it when I can do it. I can't wait for other people. Otherwise, well, you know the story. It never gets done. But I'm doing this right now, dude. Enduro. Great bike. Good looking bike. And this sucker is nine years old in the project returning by the way to its dirt roots i just mounted some dirt tires on it i think that's a michelin something that's a maxis on the back yeah and so this is a second ride on these tires i go through dirt tires really quick uh, that's because i'll do a dual sport ride i'll ride on the asphalt and then well this stuff and this gets more technical as we go along which by the way is what this video is about we're going to start here i'll talk about some things of the bike and then i want to take you with me on the ride when i say te technical it's eh, medium not too bad about what i'm willing to tackle alone on the tail of the bike is my day hike survival kit i've got extra water gatorade all the supplies of a dsk in there a tool kit and that's it my gun is an lcp2 with an extra magazine i got my fanny pack in here battery for the phone running the gopro app so i can tell if this sucker shuts shuts off it does frequently this is a hero 5 filming this and let's get back to the bike i did say it's going back to its dirt roots it has been running scorpion tires which i think are like 70 percent road 30 percent off-road I really love those tires, but they're not adequate for the stuff you're going to see here. They are sporty in the rocks, and uh, yeah, I just had to swap them out. I've taken the windscreen off. I had a Matstad windscreen it mounted right here. This is the mounting area for it. That's off. It stood about that high, and it's a great windscreen. When I'm riding interstate, I really, really love that windscreen. And actually, I'll ride with it in the dirt but i wanted to save weight i don't need it when it's so hot so it's off you guys probably saw my baja designs modification that's been on there eight years expensive i want to say that light pack cost about 500 dollars, maybe more i installed everything on the bike i do all my own work to a point but i don't have time i'll have someone else do it I just put all these tires on myself. It was a pain, but uh, it worked out. I hate doing it with the tubes. The tubes just make it nightmarish. Uh, I'm going to go over the mods, and we'll talk about the 690 and some of the changes they made to the newer versions. I have some frame sliders here on the trellis frame. That's ma mainly to protect these plastics on the road. I just leave them on for the dirt. No big deal. Love the motor on this thing. LC4. Lots of power, 66 horsepower, and that's before I put my vented KTM airbox on and my wings muffler. You can see right here, it's basically the same as an Acropovic right there. I didn't really remap this, you know, I didn't do anything with the fuel curve, it just adapted readily a little bit louder with that vented um, airbox on there. I love it. That was like a $30 add-on i've left the standard bash plate on there i probably need to upgrade that i went to ktm twins and they got a ktm one made out of alum aluminum and it's like 210 bucks i don't know i might stick with that one though but now that it's back in the dirt doing this stuff it's real easy to take anything out my big fear is like the right brake and the gear shift lever over here 
bending. I have done that on my other KTMs. I actually did on some Honda bikes too. That's just a stock shifter. They make a forged one. Dang thing is like 170 bucks, so I haven't put that on. This is a Tour Tech frame. Not great for weight, but man, is it practical. Notice how I can strap my bungees to it, put my tail bag on the back. I built this. This is a custom aluminum plate. Usually I have a Rotax gas can back here, but I don't have it on this ride. Don't need it. It just keeps things flat off the exhaust and stacked up. Occasionally I'll run one box on there. I'm talking like the Tortec side cases. It's very rare I do more than one box on this. And then when I do it, it's going to be on the non-muffler side, the narrow one. I'm going to put some like uh, standoff screws in there to jack the rear wheel up. I don't have them on now. This tank bag is an 18 liter. Total shit. I hate it. Uh, it's the only thing that I found that will fit this bike. And I always run a tank bag. You guys who just run backpacks, more power to you. Um, nothing's really accessible quickly in a backpack. I have water in here. Again, my gun is in here. You're going to laugh, by the way, when you see my holster. I didn't have a holster at this location, so I had to make one. Look at this. It's made out of freaking cardboard. Out of a wheat thins box. <laughs> no kidding. Then I rubber banded it. There's my LCP2 in there. Extra magazine. Yeah, it's working fine. I just have that mainly for Cougar up here. There's really no bad guys up here. Don't worry about that. Then I got all the tools in my, my usual fanny pack that I've talked about a lot. I mean, this thing works, but it's not super stable. Wiggles a lot. I don't like the zippers on it. They need to have a better tank bag option for the 690. This is my battery charger. So I always have it topped off. Lithium ion battery in there. Haven't done anything with the gears. We'll talk about that as I drive. I've really liked the brakes on the KTM 690 Enduro R. We have 300 millimeter up front, 240 in the back. These are WP 4600 series of front forks, rear shock. That's been upgraded in the new 20, 23 and beyond to the Explore series, probably better. I did a little adjusting in the day and then I've just kind of left it. It's been fine. I guess I have a riser plate here. I don't remember when I put that in. You might see a Scott steering stabilizer poking out right here. Yeah, right there. We'll talk about that during the ride. I installed that. It was a complete hassle. Total hassle. Yep. What else do I have on this? I've taped my turn signals with helicopter tape. KTM does a shitty job sealing these. They're not sealed at all. They don't even have O-rings last time I checked. I've got some mounts on there for the phone, which has just overheated, by the way. That's sad. Imagine that. So freaking hot. Good getting it back in the dirt. I mean, this is not like a lightweight dirt bike. This year is 306 pounds dry. Yeah, so is that too heavy for me? Mm, it's something. I mean, it's not a super lightweight bike, but for what it is... Almost 700 cc's of power. KTM power, which is saying something. Totally doable. And then that rack adds weight. My plate adds weight. I'm relatively light today, though. I think the new 690 Enduro R's are about the same weight. They have more power, though. Mine's a 66 horsepower. I think the new KTM 690 Enduro R's are putting out, like, 55 kilowatts or what is that about 72 horsepower 73 horsepower so that's amazing out of such a lightweight bike relatively speaking that is awesome yeah i probably have some other stuff on here oh yeah rally pegs it looks like they've upgraded the pegs on the 690 enduro r these are rally pegs and like everything they're expensive let me see, I spent 
Um, I mean, it all adds up, right? About 190 bucks. Holy cow. Yeah, it all adds up. I don't find the ground clearance wanting in the 690 Enduro R. It's about 11 inches, which has been adequate for what I do, my style of riding. You're gonna have about 10 inches of travel on the front and back, which again is adequate. I just read somewhere that this has a lower sitting height than the KTM 500 EXC, two and a half inches lower. It doesn't seem that low to me, but I had a 500 EXC for a long time. It was in the project. You can watch all those videos. I did updates, multiple adventures on it. Stupid to sell it. I should have never sold it. That was the bike I was riding when I hit the deer. Well, Shane hit it, and I did a sympathetic laydown. Uh, problems. What have I had with a 690 Enduro R? The ABS light stays on all the time, and you're going to see that. I've had it cleared, and it was off, and then I changed the tires. Then it's back on, and I don't think it's working. That's an ongoing problem that I've had. About a year and a half ago, I was on the interstate, and the whole bike just died. Turned out it was the main fuse. The main fuse just blew, and I had the whole bike disassembled. Well, the whole top taken off. Look, and I checked all the fuses. I didn't see anything with my multimeter that was gone. I took it to Edge Motorsports in Draper, Utah, and they told me. So we don't really know why it went. It hasn't blown since. And that's about it. I mean, it starts up. It's reliable. It's super powerful, super fun. God, what a fun bike the KTM 690 is. It has a balancer shaft in it, so it's relatively smooth. Runs like a scalded cat. 3.2 gallon tank, I feel is adequate. It'll give me about 150 mile range. Normal driving. Again, I'll throw the Rotax gas can on there, a gallon can if I need more range. I've never looked into, nor do I think I will ever mount a Safari tank or an enlarged gas tank on the Enduro. I just don't see it happening. No need. Now, in the day when I bought this, there's a dude named Nora Horak. He went around the world on his 690 Enduro R. Wrote about an ADV rider. Really awesome thread. I don't know what he's up to these days, but I really enjoyed reading about his 690s. He had one stolen, got a replacement, had about every malfunction you could ever think of, and he fixed them all in the, on, on the trail himself or at the houses of AD, ADV riders that were helping him. Yeah, I don't have his level of expertise. And by the way, I don't want to go around the world. No, thank you. I have that arrow on that tire because of the tire change. Just reminded me of the direction when I mounted the tire up. Yeah, I know it's got the disc on it too. Whatever. Just keeping it simple. I think that's most of the stuff right there. Hopefully I can get my uh, phone back on because I need to know if this thing is still running. Yeah, this will be a feature length video. Guys, I'm not in a hurry on this one. And we're going to go riding right now. So that's the upside is we're going to ride right here, right now. And I'll blabber some more. Now, I've had other duffels on the back, like a Wolfman beta duffel. It kind of drapes over the side. That's another plus of the Tortec rack. Again, it pulls it away from the muffler. But I haven't been using that lately. I use either a side case and a larger reg regular duffel. If I need to do a multi-day adventure on this. This freaking phone is dead. We'll see if it cools off. So bear with me. I'm going to have to like look frequently in the mirror to make sure this GoPro doesn't die. Not sure how long this video will be, but... If it's interesting, I'm going to post it. Really good to get back to the desert dirt roots of this bike. Now, I have a Honda 300 CRF Rally. I'll review that separately, I promise. Guys have been asking about that too. Here's a rocky section, by the way. And it's a good little bike. I do like it, but... 
it really lacks power for the kind of riding you're going to see here and when I when I take it into stuff like this I just end up hating it I'm not gonna lie nice creek right there now my tires are not deflated so much I have I think about 20 psi in the front 25 in the rear I know you guys are probably running I don't know 12 but I have to watch out for dent rims as I've ranted about through the years here in the TMP motorcycle content which obviously is here to stay by the way it's one of the alternate content forms which I've really stuck to damn the torpedoes not a ton of support I mean really it's about the level of watch reviews maybe a little bit more so in the donation environment I only have like 77 guys that watch the watch reviews oh my gosh that is horrible by the way let me show you the watch I have on since it, watches are fun and you should be into watches and if you're not something's wrong with you make sure this is going it is how about this dudes check it to so sea star black and red with an aftermarket Swiss Zulu strap on actually it's a two-piece nylon strap look how cool that is oh my gosh I'll always remember I did this video and this ride with that watch and that's what you're doing you're attaching memories to your your pieces hang on a second I gotta turn this on so I'll do an overlay cool it's working okay the phone came back now that I'm uh, moving some moving air cooled it down really a nice addition I should have been doing this all along oh my gosh these gloves are hard to get on when I'm sweaty these are reacts uh, I think I reviewed these they are great summer gloves really good great knuckle protection I don't have my climb latitude on I have a climb dirt top on it's super light real meshy because it's so freaking hot and then I have this right here so I got the dirt plastic and just my old uh, old modular helmet working good here we go dudes you see that ABS light on there whatever So when I attack this stuff, I'm riding pretty chill. And when you're alone, if you guys go out and do rides like this, I recommend you do the same. Like if I were to fly off and get hurt pretty bad, it's, uh, it's gonna create some drama for me. I got my Garmin inReach beacon in the back and it's tied to my phone so I can actually summon help through that. I don't have my other uh, personal locator beacon with me on this ride just the Garmin in reach which I do keep my subscription current and I do love it I love Garmin in reach because their waypoints and their maps are fantastic a little bit of dirt right here I'm sorry water dude I came here earlier this year and it was rolling it was raging water it was so fun We're talking about air pressure. Yeah, for this, at times, rocky stuff, there's a nice rock in the shade with a praying mantis on it, strangely. No joke, did you see that praying mantis? Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll run 20 PSI. Sometimes I'll go lower than that. This trail has a fair amount of damage from guys coming on it. Uh, when it's been wet they've worked on it I think nice creek right here I love that then you got to hit it right here this is where the Honda would struggle a little bit so I come out of that creek right into a gravelly hill climb with scree on it yeah I hate doing that in the CRF it, it'll do it but I have to basically wrap it out with a 690 I'm just feathering the clutch 
slipper clutch in this, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Yeah, so far I'm happy with the PSI I've got. Look at this section right here, dudes. Holy cow. That is rocky. Now, I told you, I think, in the walk around that I haven't changed the gearing on my 690 Enduro R. That is a true statement. Uh, a lot of guys will say it's pretty much set up for pavement, and I would agree with that. It is. It's not really low geared. Now, I will say I will never, you know, re-gear this thing, but I've been so happy with it overall. And I'm not going to get like super technical, like single track on the side of a cliff with my 690. Maybe you guys do. I, I just don't think I'm that great of uh, a dirt bike rider. <clears throat> I'm big and heavy, you know, dripping wet out of the shower. I'm uh, about 222 pounds now, fat, tall, so I have a high center of gravity. So my, my physics are a little bit different than compact riders. Like my friend Shane, he's like, how does he, like 5'8", weighs like 150 pounds, maybe 160. Great dirt bike rider, really good. He's got physics on his side too. Yeah, but we're talking about gears and you know, I just don't see the need to change my gearing yet. When I like, uh, let's say this, when I get in a decent, that's where I really like a low gear or a real long, gnarly hill climb with most m motorcycles. Look how rocky this is through here. Little ground score right there, Sam. By the way, this is called the uh, the Wild Turkey Ride. This is Wild Turkey, and it, this is the uh, Wild Turkey Loop is what we're doing here. This is a nice little crossing right here. Then it goes right into a climb. So this is where you want power, and we're gonna talk about gearing. So here we go. So the 690's got so much power, so much torque. You can see I'm not working the bike at all getting up there. This, the 300, the Honda 300, would have to work very hard to get up there. I would have it wrapped out. That's another reason I haven't re-geared this is because the torque in this thing is so broad that I don't feel a need. For the ride that I'm doing here, good indication. So if you have re-geared a 690 Enduro R, say in comment, it doesn't have to be a long comment, but I would like to learn from you. What did you do? Did you change the front sprocket? Which I prefer to do, it's easier, although it has a bigger effect on gearing. Or did you go rear? Uh, my KTM is a 350 EXCF, which I had probably the overall best dirt bike I have personally ever owned, the 350 EXCF. And then the 500 EXC, I did play with the gearing on those. I re-geared both of them. And I actually liked how it turned out, but not on the pavement. Not on the pavement. When I was on the pavement, I mean, I was really wrapping the bike out. Here, here we go, creek crossing right into a hill climb. Rocky, rocky creek crossing. Just feathering the clutch a little bit. Yeah, when I re-geared my 350 and 500, I was like, mm, they're great on the trail. I really like it. I was shifting gears gears a lot more. And yeah, I never put that mod on there where, you know, it just, uh, you just do it. It does it for you, whatever the hell it's called. I just, just kept it normal. A lot of gear shifting. That was a little bit annoying. But on the decents, I really loved it, especially on the 500. I go down a steep embankment, just put it in first, assuming I had traction, and that's a big assumption here in Utah and Wyoming where I ride. It would just take care of business. I wouldn't have to use much brake at all. This ride's really cool. Wild Turkey 
is, as you see here, it gets relatively rocky in places. And then the last half of the ride is really nice. It kind of opens up to a road. A lot of the rocks you see kicked out are guys in their razors just flying up here, just kicking rocks loose from the dirt. That's kind of the damage I was talking about. Early in the ride, there'll be a lot of ruts when they came on the trail when it was muddy or soft. And you gotta be careful there too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're driving on a dirt road and you place yourself in a really deep rut, you can actually do what I call tram lining and the bike just kind of is steering with the rut and it's real hard to get out of that rut. You have to kind of crank it left, crank it right and climb out of the rut. You're better to avoid it. And on a bike as powerful and as quickly accelerating as a 690, most of the KTMs actually, you have to be really careful because if you goose it accidentally and you're in that tram line or even on these rocks, you can have a very quick unexpected wipeout. It's just like anything, I mean, just be judicious with the power. I find MPG-wise, my 690, again, I have not tuned it, but it's gonna pull down about 45 MPG, maybe if I'm easy on it, 50 miles a gallon, which is fantastic for the amount of fun it delivers. Nice rocks through here, angled down a bit. Yeah, that's a really economical bike. In my review, I, I did call it the do everything bike or pretty close to that. Man, I'm hitting like every rock in there. Nicely done, nothing. Look how pretty this is right here on Wild Turkey. And last time I was here, there were Wild Turkey all over this place. I ran into them like twice. This is really indicative of the stuff I ride on right here. So, see the loose rock here? Not boulders, but they're large rocks, and sometimes they'll cover the entire road surface. They're very loose. I find my dirt tires that I have on there right now are doing pretty good. At my PSI level, too. Oh, and I do have a little jar of Fix-A-Flat, since this is a tube motorcycle which I don't mind I prefer over a uh, two bliss in this stuff we'll see if we see some wild turkey on this ride I've seen deer no bear yet there are black bear in this area I don't think they're real predominant though there are just a few of them elk for sure but they're at higher elevations in the summer if we were here in the winter time you see elk elk sign probably see them somewhere too I haven't seen any wild boar out here I don't really know if they're in this area this is what I'm talking about right here see that that surface right there yeah if you're running really low PSI in your tires in Utah you can have a problem I've bent uh, let me see on KTM's I've bent my rim three times let's see it was once on the 350 EXE twice uh, was it twice no it was uh, twice on the 1190 yeah I've bent it twice I sent it to Woody's wheels in Colorado to get straightened I don't know if they're still around, but they sure did good work on it. Saved me from having to buy a new rim. Look how pretty this is right here, dudes. Really nice. Earlier in the year, like I said, these creeks were raging. The water started right about here. And so, there's a couple of them that I didn't really feel comfortable crossing early in the year. Because it, it put the water all the way up to midpoint of the engine so I just said now nah, I bailed that ride and said I'll come back when it dries out a little bit we 
which I did. And the next time I came back, the water level has subsided. It's still pretty high, a lot higher than it was there. Good to see water in these hills though. But Fancy, I wish I was on this ride with you. This looks so fun. It is fun, dude. Really fun. And check this out. This is a Saturday, dudes. Saturday. And we see nobody out here. Nobody. The way I like to ride, and if you guys have watched my motorcycle content, you've seen myself and Sean talk about this, is I don't do groups. I will never do a group ride. I shouldn't say never, but I really dislike it. Uh, one dude or alone. That's generally how I will ride. Maximum three dudes, but that's pushing it for me. And I have to pair up really good with a dude I'm with, which Sean does. Sean is a great motorcycle rider. Uh, he's just kept up with everything I've ever thrown at him. Dirt, dual sport, super sport, sport touring, coastal mountains, regular mountains, mixed surface rides, heavy traffic, lane splitting, lots of lane splitting in California. Sean is the man. He's he's there He's and he's comfortable with it. He's not like out of his element. He's not like freaking out like, oh my gosh. He's digging it. Come on, Turkey, where are you? I think they like some of these open places. turn this oh, actually I'll turn off after this oh my goodness that's some rocky areas right there I like this part right here how it like banks to the right so this is a trail that you'll see eh, a couple times here and there just cuz uh, I just like it so much and for me in the big picture is accessible and it has well mixed surfaces which I like that creek's dry I just love this ride you know miles wide it's not uh, or I was gonna say miles wise it's not a super long ride but it's what you're seeing for at least the first half. I do like single track too. A good single track, I love it. Uh, as long as it's not precipitous. And by that I mean, I've done single track in Utah where it takes me, and I've posted videos on it. I think my 350 XCF overheated on that one ride. I posted a video, it was Doodle and I, and we were, in the mountain laurel and we we're on this rocky trail right on the mountainside and there's really no place to turn around really no place to work on the bike and later in the ride whoa that's rocky right there dudes suspension soaking it up wp 4600 series exploring the new bike there are other points in that ride that it was uh scary it's like we're right, not on a cliff, but we're in a forested area and the drop off was like 60 feet. Eh, I'm not some pussy, but I do manage risk well, I think. I'm medium level risk, dude. Medium level, I'm not top level. If I was, I'd just be screaming through this, this trail. Not gonna do it. No, sir. Let me uh, stop and then I'll start again because I want to save this segment. Hang on a second. Okay, we'll go up here and then we'll change the battery here in a little bit to come down on its last end. And I can't run a battery pack to the GoPro with a mic in it. This mic should be doing a good job too. I like this part right here, dude. This is cool. So the trail's actually to our left, but 
it turned into a creek and just, well, exposed all those rocks and boulders. So dudes just said, nah, go to the right. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, one thing I didn't do and I need to do, I'm gonna change my Scott's steering stabilizer because I'm getting some whiplash. So let me go one, two, three turns. And that will really stiffen it up. Why do you need that done fancy? What's it do for you? It minimizes whiplash on these rocks. See that right there? How I'm, I'm hitting these boulders, these rocks, and it just kind of wants to yank your front wheel left and right. What a stabilizer does is it absorbs a lot of that shock and keeps the wheel straight for you to a large degree. And Scott's are awesome. You'll see dudes in comments below that have a Scott's steering stabilizer and they'll they'll echo what I say. They'll say, oh yeah, it's so amazing. They're freaking expensive, very difficult to install, but you only have to do that once. Buy once, cry once. I love Scott stabilizers. I would never have a serious dirt bike that doesn't have it. Oh, rocky through here too. That's another reason I should not have sold my KTM 500 EXE. I had a safari tank on that one. Scott's steering stabilizer. I had a fuel tuner on it. Nice crossing right here. Look at this. It's pretty. Yeah, I had everything set up and the one reason I sold it, uh, it was running fine. And so even after the deer crash, it wasn't damaged at all. It had like like a bent rear shifter and that's it. That was its only damage. And then I had to like realign the triple clamp. That's it. It just felt small for me, actually. That's why. Every time I'd ride the 500 EXC on a dual sport ride, unlike this bike, I just felt like I was on a munchkin bike. It's like, dude, this bike is so small for me. And I said that in a lot of those videos that I posted, I think. Ooh, big boulder there. Now there's this one ride that Shane and I filmed. I actually filmed multiple rides that I never posted because the audio was so crappy. And I thought uh, the mic system I was using at the time, I thought it was working, blah, 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 wasn't working. There's a short in it. So we did all this amazing content by Hood River, Oregon. I was on the 500 EXC and uh, I basically can't post that unless I narrate it, which I can do. I can just mute the audio and I can narrate it. Let me know in comment if that's what you want me to do. So you can see all the beautiful single track up there going through the forest. You're seeing these gates here. Again, these are meant to limit access to this trail. They don't want four by fours on it and they actually don't want bigger ATVs on this section. I should say side by sides. I think the road starts getting better from here on out. Maybe a couple sections here and there. Look at how pretty this is, dudes. Wild turkey ride. We had a pretty good water year up here. Lots of rain, lots of snow. That's one reason these mountains are still green for the most part. I'm looking up here and there's some, there's some dead stuff. Might as well uh, change my battery out right now. Let's do that, dude. So these are Reacts Superfly gloves. Super excellent. Perfect for what I'm doing here. Knuckle protection, top finger protection. Comfortable, adequately cool. The Superfly, Superfly. And water break over. New camera battery in. 
great to be with you guys. Thanks for watching the video. More views means more of this. Specifically dirt. Dirt rides like this. Like if this video were to kill for views, especially in the donation environment, if I logged in 24 hours later and I saw 500 views on this, which is a lot in the donation environment, I'd be like, hmm, I need to do more dirt riding. More dirt adventures. And this will probably be the bike I'll be using. 690. What a machine. Really excellent. The one thing I'll say is the way I got it set up right here with that Tour Tech stainless steel rack on it, it does add some weight. Now granted, that weight's in the rear and it gives me more traction, but it still makes a bike heavier. The 350 EXEF 500 will be, in my opinion, better dirt bikes than this. I have toyed with the idea of selling the Honda 300 CRF or CRF 300 Rally and getting another 500. Let me know if that's a good idea or a dumb idea. By the way, I've done this ride with that Honda 300 and it will do it. It, it. I'm not like out here going, oh my gosh, this thing sucks so bad. Well, hold on. Let me back that up a little bit. I am in some parts like that really technical stuff where we do a creek to hill climb transition. I do not like its power level. It's wanting to say the least. Here we have a gentle climb, but look at the rocks. The scree on this, it's a lot. 90 will tear this stuff up though. No problem. Especially with those new tires. Now if I had my Scorpion Scorpions on, it still would have done that, but I would have had some wheel slip going on there. Here I'm in uh, first gear. We go to second. This one I'm talking about how for descents I like a lower gearing. These gears are just too high for descending. I'm having to tap brake or use first gear a lot now remember in the camera what I show it never translates in, in terms of steepness like I could be on a really steep climb and in the camera it looks like eh, nothing I don't know why that is it just it's always been that way not that this ride the wild turkey doesn't have that it has moderate climbs short this is easy but if we were to go on this road when it T-bones into another road and hang a right and drive for another five miles, and maybe I do that on this bike with you guys, that climb is a son of a gun. I mean, it goes on and on and on, and it's steep. It's rocky and steep. I would never take the 300 on that climb. This I would. Alone. I don't know if I'd do it alone. Here's some of those ruts I was talking about where you can tram line the ones that you just saw there. There's probably some more up ahead. Right here. Look at how deep those ruts are. That's guys driving in this when it was soft. And they can come up this side in their 4x4s because there's no gates, I don't think, on this side. I don't know if I do a really technical climb alone. I'd like to have Sean with me on his bike. He's got like a little 250 smoker. I think it's a Yamaha. Yeah, help me pick it up if it dumps. This one, if it dumps, it's heavy, but I can pick it up. As long as it doesn't have a bunch of guns and ammo on it. Whew. That's a tricky part right there. When I have the KTM 1190 loaded up, dudes, and I dumped out in the desert, I have to unload everything from it. The side boxes gotta come off. All the guns gotta come off. Because if I don't, I cannot get that bike up. Doesn't happen. But I like the 1190 because it can haul so much for gear testing purposes. This bike has a moderate capability with the one Tour Tech box on it and a big duffel. 
it can do pretty good. I mean, I could take easy two ARs out in the desert to test. And I still have some steel plates secreted away in certain places. It does okay. But the 1190 really as a gear testing bike is better. But I take the 1190 on this run. Mm, no way alone. No way alone. For those transitions where it goes from the creek really steep. Uh, I think I could do it. But I have 80, 20 tires on the 1190. They're not really dirt tires. And that's... that's that's the job of that motorcycle. Um, how would it do on that climb? Jeez, I don't know. Uh, probably there would be drama. So once you keep your power up on any KTM and you stay on the damn bike, <laughs> it's gonna go. Assuming you don't hit a boulder or something that'll take your steering off. These things are so fast. KTMs really have a race heritage and it just shows in their DNA. I've always said that. And I'm not the only one saying that. KTM says that. And all their literature, they're like, yeah, you know, we, we test this out on the track and then we integrate it into our motorcycles. And they do. Big rut right here. They can be quirky. I mean, on the 1190, I have some things going on with it. Uh, like, it, the TPMS is malfunctioning all the time. I've even taken to the dealer and he can't figure it out either. So I just live with it. I don't really like TPMS sensors on motorcycles. I think they're more of a hassle than anything. Yeah, just sometimes electronics just uh, give you some problems. And uh, you have to deal with that. But overall, every KTM motorcycle I've purchased, I've never regretted that purchase ever. And I know they're expensive. Like KTM products are ludicrously expensive. And they've gone up after the scamdemic. The plandemic. Yeah, it raised prices on everything and they've stayed high. And they're hard to find. Like you don't just go to a KTM dealer out west and go, hey, I uh I think I want to get a 690 Enduro R. Where are they parked? They'll go, yeah, we don't have any. They sell within three days when we hit they hit the showroom floor standing up now and that's how it is you do like a uh, dual sport dirt bike like a 350 xcf 500 same thing uh yeah sir we can put an order in for you and if everything works out it'll be six months on most of the ktm popular bikes you'll find some of the non street legal dirt bikes on the floor like I went to Edge the other day and they had I don't know some 250s 300 dirt bikes and they're there dual sports are the way to go though dude unless you just always want to be committed to trailing your motorcycle which uh, I, I try not to do I did it on this ride but I try not to do that very often and when I have pure dirt tires on like I do now I don't like riding on pavement for a very long time it just wears the shit out of them and it's just money down the tube bumpy right through there scree right through there feather in the clutch forward momentum oh, this is more rocky than I remember nice climb not climb but creek crossing right here I'll go to the left. That fancy cross right in the middle of it, you puss. Nah, I don't like getting my bike all mudded up for no reason, dudes. Uh, you should be the same. Oh, someone just came down here because there's dust in the air. So here's another threat. Like right behind me, I drove that the other day. There's like six inches of this moon dust, as I call it. Be careful in that too, dudes. It can be dangerous I'm in it right now but not six inches I probably got I don't know, three inches back there good heavens I got dust coming to my shield down I've been riding with my shield up now I took you on a Wyoming ride near the high Uinas. that was really fun I posted that one last year 
Uh, not many people watched it, of course. So sad. They should have, because that, that's a really fun video where I take you on that. And I think, was I on the 890 or the 690? Uh, I think I was on this bike. Might have been the 890, which is also a great bike. Holy cow, nothing fancy. How many motorcycles do you have? Uh, I have more than a few. But I work my ass off in life. Not just TMP. I, I work. I'm hustling. I make money. My time is valuable. Valuable. Very. That's why I need donors to keep me going in TMP. Otherwise, I gotta go do something else to make money. Make money while you can, bro. Get you cool stuff like this. Life isn't all about money. I mean, you could do this ride on a KLR 650 and have a blast. Now, personally, I hate those bikes. Sorry if you own one. I, a stock KLR 650, Kawasaki, no thank you. It needs a lot of work. Suspension work, baggage work, ergonomic work. And in the end, you saw that crap motor. I don't like this motor either. I have ridden them. Reminds me of my uh, XR650 Honda Thumper. I didn't like that bike either. Here's that deep moon dust. See that stuff right there? Oh, man. And you saw the steering stabilizer. As soon as I hit it, it just kind of stopped the, the handlebars from whipping back and forth. I'm still in that stuff. This happens when... This moon dust happens when it's super dry, super hot like this, and the road sees a lot of traffic. And are we out of it? Nope, still in it. Holy hell, this stuff is deep right here. Really deep. So this is like five inches deep. Hate moon dust. Hate it. It's worse than gravel, I think. And it's so insidious. You can be riding along on a road in Wyoming and Utah and you think you're A-OK, -okay, you're doing like 40 miles an hour, not that fast, and you hit moon dust, it's like, holy crap, high drama. Again, the steering stabilizer, very helpful in that situation. Yeah, you could do this ride on an inexpensive motorcycle. And I have made that point in a whole ton of motorcycle videos in TMP. I've told guys, hey, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a bike. Just get out. Go to Cycle Trader. Get a used motorcycle that fits you. Fits your experience level, what you plan on doing with it. And get out and have a blast. Do little rides. Get your confidence up. Ride a lot, though. The more you ride, the better you are. And every discipline is its own skill set. So now I'm dirt riding. That's its own skill set. Street riding, skill set. Super sport, skill set. There's deep dust right there. But I was making the point that money is freedom. It is. It gives you freedom. And can get you some nice things to do fun adventures. At its core, that's what the project is all about. So... I'm a gear adventure channel and I model the use of the stuff I review just like this. I mean, motorcycle gloves, HGC helmet, KTM motorcycle, Scott steering stabilizer, tank bag, Garmin in reach. I always thought that's how to do it. Like, before I started TMP, I thought that. I was like, man, it'd be cool to show dudes how to use gear. Because a lot of guys don't get it. And they don't get how cool it can be and what adventure levels can be achieved with that gear. Got to be careful. Here's a blind corner. You can have a 4x4 four four cruising around the other side. Swing wide. And... Most do, I think. I mean, most guys are like, hey, I, you know, I know what a, motorci a dirt motorcycle is supposed to do. I don't really need to be told how to use it. <laughs> but some guys don't. You know, they, they're new to it. Maybe they grew up in a city. 
there might be some guys watching this that live in, I don't know, Philadelphia. And they go, man, I'd love to be out there in the West. Hit that road that Nut Fancy's doing, do those creek crossings. Life is short. Plan accordingly. Get out and get it done. I want to talk to the suspension real quick on the 690. I told you I tweaked it early on and I really haven't done anything with it since. And on this ride, and you've seen it, I've been completely happy with the suspension. Completely happy. Soaking it up just the way I'd want it to. Not too soft, not too firm. And that I find is a KTM characteristic that I think they're very non-quirky in their rear fork, in their front fork, and the rear mono suspension. They just dialed in. My Honda CRF 300 Rally, it's way soft. That's a suspension that I'm not pleased with. It needs work, like a lot of less expensive bikes do. KLR again. And guys are like, hey man, I can just buy the bike, which I did with the 300, and then if and when I want to upgrade it, I will. I was running over prices with you though on stuff I bought for this bike and how expensive things are. They're just expensive. And that's if you do the work yourself. If you give it to a shop, you're looking at hundreds and hundreds of dollars in labor, probably a big delay. I think most guys will do their own stuff. I think Char Man, it's a good thing I have that app open. The camera just shut down again. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe I haven't been using this app. I will from now on. Downside is I don't have my phone for navigation. I might have to get and use a burner phone for like ways on a road ride or something like that. Sean couldn't come out today. I threw an invite to him, but he's like busy with family stuff. He's got a big family too. So he's like, oh man, I wish I could. And just to get where we are, hours and hours of work for him to get to this location. So again, I can't wait. I have to go. And I don't mind riding alone, like I've said. I don't mind it. I actually like it. As long as I'm not getting too remote, too sporty, I'm talking like technical stuff, then I don't mind it. There's a gravel surface here. Great motorcycle, the 690. These are mirrors I put on. I think they're from an 890 because I've gone through probably three sets of mirrors. The double take mirrors I don't like. They don't stay in position. And I've cranked them down. I've used double takes on my 350 500 and they're total shit. I've tried everything and they just won't work for me. These are great. They stay in position. They take the vibration of trail riding. The only, oh, there's the first thing, first dude we've seen. The only bad thing on these is if you dump it, they'll snap off. Yes, talk about dust is what I was talking about. Let that dude go. Now let's talk about my my gear that I have on right now. I talked about the gloves, the React Superflies, warm weather, leather riding gloves, my old HGC modular helmet, and I'm going to unclip here so I don't know if you'll hear me, but I like this plastic armor, this dirt armor. Pretty easy to wear. Just a fine that I'm wearing right now. So I don't have the level of protection I normally have, but again, it's so freaking hot out here. What am I gonna do? Just have to make some compromises. Oh 
my goodness, the ride is coming to an end, dudes. Feature length KTM 690 Enduro R update. And I really like this format. So we'd start with a walk around of the bike, reminding you of my modifications, general costs on those modifications, maybe some differences between my 2014, that's what this is, Enduro R versus the new one. Overall, I would say it's basically the same bike with some minor improvements. KTM doesn't sit around. They're always changing and improving things. And they do a great job doing that. I would buy this motorcycle all over again. Like I said at the outset, I'm never planning on selling it. I look forward to your comments if you actually have this bike. How you use it. I want to know how you use it. How often do you use it? I would say if you don't get out on your bike, let's say, God, I'm catching up with that guy and eating his dust. Four times a year, you might look into whether you need to keep it or not. You might want to sell it. Unless you're at a busy junction in your life and you're just waiting for your schedule to open and then sometimes it makes sense hanging on to it. Because you're like, well, right now I'm really busy with work for the next two years and then I know it's going to get better. I'll hang on to it then. If you ever think you'll use it, hang on to it. Crap. <sighs> Catching up with this dude and eating his dust. Hate doing that. And he's driving right down the middle of the road like an asshole. Dude, pull over so a bike can get past you. He's driving right down the middle of the road. Jeez. I don't know how much 690s are now. I'm sure they're pricey. I know this though, if you ever get tired of your 690 Enduro R, you'll have no problem selling it. All kinds of dudes will want to buy it. I bet you have it up, assuming you've priced it correctly, you'll have it up for, I don't know, two days and it'll be sold. In Utah, that's definitely the case. Running water down there, awesome. Hot as heck up here still. Still 98 degrees. Getting hotter actually as we come down from the elevation. We weren't that high on that ride. Wild turkey ride. Well, I guess I'll sign off here, dudes. Thanks again for subscribing. Hit that notification bell wherever I post this. I'll probably post it as I have been doing on both the A and B channel in YouTube. The, the donors will of course get to see it first. And then I'll watch the interest level. So it's in competition with a lot of other content types that I do as you know, right? So I have to balance that out and I have to give Really, all the team peers what they want. I mean, if I just said, I'm just doing motorcycle content, a lot of guys just leave, which is kind of silly, ridiculous, but it has happened. I never post this content and sacrifice some of my other core content, like gun, knife, watch reviews. They, they still keep posting. All right, dude, see you in the comments. Ride safe, ride a lot. Get out and make some great adventure memories on your motorcycles. Don't wait for others, by the way. Don't. If you tie your adventures to other people's schedules, uh, they may not happen ever. See you next video. Over and out. Not fancy.